Dawson, the sound guy, has a soft spot for the weed. He can make a pipe out of anything and hawks loogies of brown and green. Puffity, puff, puff, puffity, puff, puff, he's firing up a bowl. Puffity, puff, puff, puffity, puff, puff, Dawson is always stoned. Fitz Dog in studio. You can uh, find him on his Instagram at Fitz, sorry, at Greg Fitzsimmons, at Greg Fitzsimmons. Let's give him to 100,000 followers. Website, FitzDog.com for all the live shows as well. So funny. You were so, we just played that Puffity song, Puffy song. Because I was just saying to Dr. Drew <clears throat> earlier today, I go, do we need Poofy and Puffy? They're the same thing. Poofy yeah. and puffy? Yeah. We use, some people say poofy. And we have the word poofy. It's a word. And we have the word puffy. <laughs> Never heard the word poofy in my life. You probably heard poofy, but you thought puffy. Maybe. People say, oh, that guy's hair is super poofy. Right. <laughs> it could mean puffy. But puffy and poofy are two different words that mean the same thing. We looked it up. Did there Poof, it is. Did Poofy get canceled last <clears throat> week? Poofy was derived <laughs> from... Wait, Puffy. Puffy is derived from Poofy. So Poofy predated Puffy. But... Yeah, so Poofy needs to be... <clears throat> is filled with air, whereas Puffy could just be like something swollen. Yeah, I guess. It's the difference between Poofy and Puffy is Poofy is of or pertaining to something that is puffy, filled with air. I don't think it need. I don't it's think not like it, the does exact it need same to be filled with air? Yeah. It's the same. I'm saying we don't need both. Yeah. You should have poofed on that joint instead of puffed, is what I'm saying, Dawson. But we do need puff, but we don't need puffy. Or we don't need poofy. Fitz dog, you just use poofy. No, puffy. I said puffy. Yeah, puffy's your word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poofy exists. Yeah. And we don't need it. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I'm trying to think of other words that are redundant that we don't need. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to think about it. Give us some thought. I'm going to get back to you. I got this scratch sheet and a pen. Please. Homework. All right. What's in the news? Well, let me give you an update on the uh, the song poll really quick. So we tweeted out, which song is worse, Maneater or I Was Made for Loving You? Mm -hmm. Over 250 votes at the moment. Maneater is worse. 58.4% say it's mm. worse. Not much, though. <coughs> it's not a, not a foregone conclusion. No, it's, it's close. And some of the comments are, um, you can play I Was Made for Loving You at the Strip Club. Can't say the same for Maneater. Mm, that's a good point. Good point. But a lot of people like Maneater. And, a lot, uh, someone, mm. and I Was Made for Loving You, someone said, that's a guilty pleasure of mine. No. Um, trick question. They're both awesome, someone said. No. Cool. So, yeah. All right. So rank these three. All right. Uptown Girl by Billy Joel. Yep. We Built This City by Jefferson Starship. Yep. And Kokomo by the Beach Boys. Ooh. Those are all tool tunes. We Built we This City is the greatest. As we refer to. Those are songs that I would listen to, but with the windows up. On yeah. the car. Oh, really? And, and the the actual you want to know the actual definition of the tool tune? We say like it's a song that you're enjoying, like you know if Barbie Girl came on or something, <laughs> or I'm too sexy for my shirt or something. I might listen to it, but I would roll the window up. Yeah. I think it would be. I think the real definition of a tool tune is if you had a black Uber driver, would you listen to it? on your phone and and none of those would work for yeah. that but you might do it alone yeah i guess is right, what i'm right. what okay. i'm saying interesting yeah. but there is a difference between a shit song and then a song that is you know you like quietly but don't want to be judged about all right here's a shit song <clears throat> Um, Hell is for children by pat benatar <laughs> well hold on a Come second on. hold on hold on mr fitz dog yeah that's my go-to karaoke No, it's number. not. Yes. No way! <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. And the reason... It's really good because I can talk it up during this part. Uh -huh. Do we have any kids out there? 
I had a pretty <laughs> rough childhood. <laughs> a lot of <laughs> a lot of folks that have been. Well, we'll just call them. It's not. It's not. It's called rape survivor, incest survivor. We don't say victim. You understand? We say survivor because we put a much more positive spin on it, and then I go into it, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Right. And then at the end, at the end, they go crazy, and I just start throwing punches and karate kicks. Yes. I mean, I think they're not had a man show rap party where I didn't. I didn't bust this thing out at the end. That's amazing. Yeah, and I'm all spits done. Yeah. Hell's Children's is not on the table for the Ace Man. <laughs> I start with Vehicle by the Ides of March, and then I finish with Hell's oh, for Children. Nice. That's that's how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> Karaoke then, standpoint. Do you collapse on the stage or is it James <laughs> Brown thing all, where somebody leads all. you off? I have off. a guy who brings a robe yeah. out to me. It's kind of a cape robe. It's uh-huh. terry cloth, but it's a cape, yeah. you know, and he just kind of helps me. Are you, are you, are you given a scepter? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not that... You know, I'm not a showman. I'm, yeah. I'm there to work for the right, crowd, right. and then I'm just want to. You're a get conduit the, for the music. That's right. It, it travels through me. Through you. Yeah, and occasionally, if a, there's a lady I want to do a duet with, I will pick up this sheriff song. Sheriff had a hit called uh, "I Can I Can't Make It Without You." No, babe, babe, I don't. Sheriff. Sheriff only had one hit. The band Sheriff. But I'll I'll bring a lovely lady. You know, I extend my hand. Yeah. And I bring I'll bring a lovely level. She was not <laughs> she was upstairs. It's they all cry. I just asked. <laughs> right. They all cry. Yeah, I guess cried. So. yeah. All right, YouTuber. Oh yeah, so something. he takes off on a plane uh thirty minutes later while flying above the Los Padres National Forest. Mm-hmm. Uh he said that the plane's engine had failed. Mm-hmm. And he had to jump out of the plane. So here's the video. Mm-hmm. But he's filming it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because he's a YouTuber, so he has GoPros out. Oh, but okay. it's like, hey, engine has failed, and he just jumps out of the plane. Mm. Yeah. So I, and, I guess you can't ditch it in a national forest. I well, he ditched it. I guess. And he has a no, no. Stick. I mean, you can't ditch it. You can't land it. You know? Oh, right. You can jump out of a plane, but you can't try to land the plane. Yeah, so he ditched it, and he has a selfie stick following him as the, the plane crashes. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has now been charged six months in federal prison for staging this small plane crash. Yeah. So 30-year-old guy. So he's, um, yeah, he, he basically admitted, yeah, it was an intentional crash. Oh, he, he, he announced it. Yeah, because they, because everybody, like, viewers were suspicious at first. They were like, He's already wearing a parachute. He had no. He made no yeah. attempt to glide the aircraft to a safe landing area. Just took the camera with a selfie stick and bailed. Well, again, I don't. You know, they call that dead stick when the propeller stops, uh, and when a plane's like dead stick and you're in the mountains, uh, I don't know where you're going to put that thing down. You, you know what I mean? So if I'm if I'm making his argument, I'm basically saying, look, I got a window to try to get out of this plane. I mean, literally a time window. You, you know, you know what I mean. And that time window is going to go away if I'm heading down and trying to find a place to land this thing, and there is no place to land this thing. But so he kind of had that argument, but then. They could probably forensically like go through the plane, although I don't know if they could go. Oh, the carburetor was yeah, clogged, the jet was clogged, box. or something there's like a, that. There's another interesting thing. Um, <coughs> if you had a full tank of fuel, there would have been an, a, a major explosion on right. impact. Mm-hmm. So we had to be really, really careful, you know, in knowing that Not if he stays in this, he can start a forest fire right. in LA. So he definitely made sure. At least that's the way I think there would be an explosion on impact if it was full of fuel. Because there's yeah, metal, but, there's going to be a spark. But if you ditch the plane, you're going to start the fuel fire too, aren't you? If you jump no, out not of it? No, not if you have an empty tank. Well, so I think he purposely ditched the plane when, you know... Well, he ditched did the he plane. Did he say he ran out of gas? Or did he say... Yeah, he said, well, he, he just admitted that the, he said the engine failed. But then, so... 
Uh, he was told days after the crash to preserve the site and inform the National Transportation Board where it was. Instead, this guy goes to the crash site. He used a helicopter to lift the wreckage out. Then bit by bit, he dismantled and disposed of the wreckage in an attempt to thwart the federal investigation. Uh, uh. He pled guilty earlier this year to destruction concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. Um, the quote is, it appears that Jacob exercised exceptionally poor judgment in committing this offense. He most likely committed this offense to generate social media and news coverage for himself and to obtain financial gain. Nevertheless, this type of daredevil conduct cannot be tolerated. Well, also you get into trouble for covering the crime as well as the crime. Yeah. Because trying to cover it up. Yeah. So he wrote, so Jacob has wrote that he is, quote, sincerely sorry and has suffered a lot of consequences from this offense. Uh, while I carefully researched the plane route to make sure the crash would not be near human housing or trail, trail routes, I should have never gone forward with it. So he did right. it all for the clicks. Well, he's going to be the only guy in cell block H who ditched a Cessna. Because everyone else there stabbed a cop, raped their stepdaughter, yeah, or whatever. He, yeah. he will be the bell of cell block H. Because I guarantee there's not going to be anybody else who's in that prison for ditching a Cessna. Right, right. Or bailing out of yeah. a Cessna. No, it's like uh, his 9-11. Yep. Well... All right, but he fessed up to it. Yeah, he got he six, up months. six months. Yeah. Um, so there is a, a type of daredevil act that people are But you know, are when, loving. when we when you hire people and they go like, oh, they want to know if you have a record or you're a felon or whatever it is. Um, you know, when a guy comes in, he wants a job, and I see he has a record, and that record is like arson, yeah. statutory rape, vandalism or something. But jumping out of a moving airplane well, i the, tend to hire that guy i like the cut of his jib that yeah the downside is he's he's a guy who doesn't finish a job do you yeah do you want him on a project of, he could jump out of the out of the transpo van yeah. before it comes to the board <laughs> parks <laughs> <laughs> once you deliver these parcels to downtown he bails on it right. on the 10 freeway right yeah, yeah he could do that you're yeah. right but i still think i like the cut of his jib yeah because that guy, because that's a guy you could go, you got to come in Saturday, and he can't go. Geez, I'm really not up to it. You because you'd go, you're up to jumping out of a yeah. fucking airplane uh, with a with, that was dead stick. Yeah, come on, right? All right, sorry. Um, so there is a guy who everybody's loving that jumped off a cliff into a large body of water. So so this is a, a Norwegian death diver. Oh, I saw Ken this. Ken Stornes. So he he's a uh, he's Instagram famous. So he just committed the new or uh, got the new world record, 132 feet. Wow! And here here let's watch it. So first he starts off by throwing a stone into the water. Now people think that he does this uh, to break the surface tension, but let's just watch him jump in now. A lot of hang time. <laughs> Did he belly flop it? No, it looked like so, he went fate. Yeah. So the death dive, and if you do a death dive competition, you have mm -hmm. to do that pose for as long as possible before you curl up into like a ball. And, oh, and really? Go, yeah, you don't go water. with your legs straight. No. You do. You do that weird pose, and then you go. You yeah, go cannonball. Yeah, basically. So he could set a few records. He could set the cannonball splash record. Wow. He could send the deepest dive <laughs> record. <laughs> Yeah, Are, is that ice yeah, in that I think water? That's yeah, ice. yeah, this is this is in Norway. So oh, this Damn. guy is. Yeah, this is a cold plunge. Yes, yeah, another guy I want to hire. <laughs> yeah, Steve, that's I need for to, sure. I need to pick up. Hey Bjorn, I need to pick up donuts <laughs> on the way, and I don't really think I'm. You're not up to it. Well, this is also, you're not up to it. <laughs> yeah, this is also why you want to hire him. So, the uh, the previous record was for 102 feet. Oh, he's one of these guys. And he did it. He's the one that said it. Oh, I love a guy who breaks his own Broke record. Broke his own by 30%. record by, by 30% and not a, two years later. Well, don't the guys who really have the record that are the guys who fell <laughs> off, who tried to kill themselves on the Golden Gate Bridge, but, I guess, but survived? Well, I was just, I was just <laughs> I mean, there, and right, I researched the, this because I was curious if any... They just put... Are you ready for this shit? They put a net up around the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. It took so long, and there was so many cost overruns, that in... Two thousand twenty-three dollars versus when they made the bridge in whatever mm -hmm. year that was. Yeah, the bridge itself cost ten percent more than the net to put around the bridge. Right. Which, by the way, if you have any commitment as a suicidal, jump you're gonna the hit net, the you're gonna hit the net. 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 You're gonna run off to the edge of the net. Jump again, right? 
if you ever see like what the uh, circus trapeze guys do, yeah. who miss the grip, you know, they hit the net and then they go to the edge of the net and they flip That's themselves. Right. It's a be- it's a beautiful move. Yeah. That flip off the side of yeah. the net. I love it. I love that move. It's yeah. part of my childhood seeing guys do whoop. Yeah, off, off the edge. So yes, you would do that. And the same, I guess, if you worked in a Japanese or a Chinese factory making iPhones right. and you wanted to kill yourself, I feel like the net could be defeated. But this guy, I like this guy. I like that it was frozen water. I like that he set the record. I like that he wasn't wearing some kind of unitard or yeah. you know, wetsuit yeah. or something. He just went full speedo. Yeah. Uh, I love that guy. The real, I mean, the real hero is the guy who rigged the platform. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, the, you got to take this piece of plywood <laughs> yeah. and put it on the side of a cliff, okay? Yeah. That guy deserves a, a medal as well. And I don't know, what is the high, now you got to look it up, Dawson. What is the Golden Gate Bridge off the water? Because these people need to be in contention for the well, world record. Well, maybe ninety-five feet or something. I don't know if it's well, above one thirty. Something like three percent, three or five percent of people that jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge have survived. Yeah, but it's not just the impact; it's the currents. Yes, it's very difficult to survive those currents. Yes, it's two hundred twenty feet. Oh well, this guy doesn't have the record. Yeah, I hope next time. That's he, right. I hope That's the right. next time he pulls into a bar, he sits down next to a guy who tried to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> on the Golden Gate Bridge and survive because he's going to be like, yes, my name is Bjorn. You know yeah. what I do? And they're yeah. like, eh, 132 feet. No, he's from San Francisco, that's, Adam. That's cute. Well, not Bjorn. And that that's at no. high tide. So oh, yeah. if you go at low tide, it's it's much, a much farther drop. Anybody could tack 100 feet onto this guy's record yeah. who survived the Golden Gate Bridge. Those and are the a, real and heroes. A, and a tougher piece of water to get out of. That's right. Yeah, and sharks. The That's sharks right. under the Golden Gate Bridge. That's right. All right, so this guy didn't Pussy. do jack shit. <laughs> and I, I guess the reason he throws the rock over is because he needs to see the rippling of the water so he can prepare for impact because you lose like your depth perception. So people think it's to break the surface tension of the water so it's a softer landing, but it's not. It's, when they have... So there is a thing, another thing for Dawson to look up, high divers into water, like when they would do it as like a sideshow at like, um, it used to be a thing, Acapulco cliff diving used to be a thing. They used to do a dive in uh, like Marine Land or SeaWorld or something. There was such a thing as a sort of sideshow, which is high divers, right? And they'd land in little pools. They'd land in pools, Yeah. yeah. And they would bubble up the pool at, uh-huh. at, to give them a spot. And I don't know if it had something to do with softening up, but it would bubble. It would bubble, and these guys would do it. And whenever I saw this, any of this, I was always like, the jump from the platform at the top, which is crazy because guys can go full handstand with this little two-foot-by-two-foot two platform yeah. at the top. The hairiest part of that whole endeavor was the 90-foot ladder climb. That was like outside of the pool. <laughs> yeah. You have to climb up a hundred foot ladder, and if you fell, you hit the asphalt. Yeah. You weren't, it wasn't in the middle of the pool, it was right. outside of the yeah. pool. So that's kind of a crazy gig, but they bubbled. I have a video of a high dive record from 1984, uh, 172 feet. Oh, see, this guy's standing on that little fucking ladder. And they would do flips and stuff. Oh, my God. I mean, how crazy is the ladder part? How deep is the pool? I, is, he's going into Shamu's pool. Is his girlfriend, Linda? His girlfriend. <laughs> She's talking to herself nonstop. I, I, if I were Linda, I wouldn't have attended. Well, maybe there's a large life insurance policy. Oh, no, you're right. Up there, eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Meditating. What's it going to feel like? What do I have to do right off the top? Oh, is that Kathy Lee Gifford or somebody? There's Linda. Oh, no, what's her name? Down below. No, that's Never what's done her. this before. He does not know what to expect. She's oh, doing flips. flips. Wow. Oh. wow. He didn't hit well. Now, he could is that for timing? The dive was good. It was solid. He's a strong competitor. Sorry, Bjorn. You just got your ass kicked by a fucking American in a speedo with wonderful hair. He just did a fucking five, full gainer. I yeah. mean, he did. 
She did the full flip. I'm telling you, these are the world's greatest it's athletes. One. It was a flip. I mean, could you imagine someone telling him with a twist and a it gainer? A, it was a two two full flips and a half gainer. Put the ball oh. in. Imagine the impact on your balls. My ball hands would sack. be right underneath there. Yeah. He made it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I've I've jumped off pretty high cliffs in my day. Yeah. And and it's the balls and it's also the water you get up your nose. Yeah. Yeah. Very intense. Yeah, guys used to swim with a nose pincher. Do you guys remember yeah. that? Yeah. It was the opposite of a breathe right strip. Right, yeah. <laughs> it was the, the same company probably made the <laughs> nose pincher. Yeah. When my dad got into the pool, he'd go with the nose. Oh, no. When my dad would go into a swimming pool, he would dive in and hold his nose with one hand. Like, you couldn't look, be, look like a bigger pussy than holding and doing yeah. the one handed right. dive in my grandparents' four foot deep fucking pool in North Hollywood. But, uh, I used, to, I, I used to be a bubbler in pools. You farted? Yeah. Mm. That's why I like a good hot tub. You can just kind of... I- am I right that the climb up the fucking ladder is the scariest part yeah. of this, this equation the that this who, guy who, just who, did? Who are just getting out of the pool, they're all, they have wet feet, mm-hmm. wet hands, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. climbing up the ladder. It's yeah, windy. you're right. Got all the kiss makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Just standing. The platform he's standing on is 18 inches by 18 inches. Yeah. I don't know. He didn't get airlifted up there. They have to crawl up there. Yeah. How many times (laughs) do you see people go up on a cliff, like friends, and then pussy out and have to climb down? You couldn't do that with a crowd of people. No, we did that. We, we, We climbed up onto the roof of the Mulholland Club. We used to break in in the Mulholland Club when I was in high school, right? And the Mulholland Club had a two-story or three-story roof that was above the swimming pool. and But you had to clear some patio. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, you had, to, you had to get a little run at it at night, you know. And the way we got up there is we went up to the upper deck, the patio, and we stacked furniture on top of one another. We're all naked. And we were, we pulled ourselves up. A piece of conduit was sticking out with a light on it. We pull all ourselves up and we get up on the roof, right? And my buddy Ray jumped, my buddy Chris jumped, uh, I jumped. But it was a little hairy because it was at night and you had to jump out and clear some, some cement. And then there was a diving board sticking out too. You had to kind of avoid that. And I told everyone the same thing. <laughs> my friend Snake. I was giving the safety speech on the roof, you know, because everyone was naked and drunk and 18. And I was like, I was sort of sensible. I was like, listen, let's think this out. Because if somebody misses the pool, you're going to be in a you're quadriplegic. Yeah. Like, and, and I also came up with a theory, which is either hit the pool fully or miss it fully. Don't land half yeah. in. If you laugh half in, you'll get more fucked up. Right, you won't right. get half as fucked up. You'll get twice as fucked up. I'm giving this safety speech, and my buddy Snake just runs past me in the night, just goes flying <laughs> off the roof, right in the middle of my safety speech. Snake would do that. And then everyone Checks jumps out. off, but our friend Rudy can't oh, get himself no. to do it. And he's on the roof, and it's naked. He's naked, and there's no way to get off the roof. And let, you have to jump, because off the roof is you got to climb back down the stucco face. We took patio furniture and stacked it uh-huh. on top of one another with like a chair on top of two yeah. tables. Like you just couldn't crawl down, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't get off the. Uh, it's a shame with that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. the opposite of the movie Rudy, where he <laughs> yeah. would have done it. You right. know, yeah, right. still both acquired cheers. They also like those tall water slides. You would just see guys just walking down the steps of, get, of yeah. the top of the water slide. Like, oh, why, yeah. why I, too long? I'd make more fun of them, but I just did that with a snowboard last summer. I was like, I can't make it down this hill with, on this snowboard. I'm walking it. So Rudy's probably laughing <laughs> right. somewhere. 